The thing is, uh, we will go through all the patients we've been treated today and uh, all the things you guys need to know, okay? And also, after that part, you guys can ask any question, uh, th those three patients related or anything yeah, is related. Let's finish everything within this half hour here, okay? All right, yeah. So, uh, the, uh, Mi Mia is the lead doctor for the first patient, right? So Mia, how about you share, uh, you guys can have a seat, okay? So how about Mia, you share the information about the first patient, but uh, what is the symptom, what is the chief complaint, what is your diagnosis, and what is our approach? Go. Mm. Two or three, good, very good. So the pain reduced from eight all the way to two or three, right? By using the balance method. The patient chief complaint actually more than one. She has a three chief complaint. One is the left side of the shoulder, whenever a certain angle is eight out of 10, right? And uh, the second issue is uh, she, uh, he have uh, some like a uh, spine related issues right in the middle or the mid back, T7, T8-ish. And uh, once in a while, he will have some pain. He will also have uh, the third issue is uh, his right hip. His right hip have some of the stiffness and the pain related issues, okay? And, uh, but uh, the chief complaint is the left shoulder, eight out of 10. So why are we using the balance method when we're treating that patient, why? And what time are you gonna use the balance method? So this is very important. So you guys can decide in the future what time to try the balance method and what time is not working. So what time, for, why are we using balance method for this patient's shoulder? Because I'm trying to direct the good energy from the good side to Well, yeah, uh, that, however, that is not the reason why we're using the balance method. The balance method is uh, when the pain can trigger out by certain movement or when the patient have current condition. They feel the pain whenever doing certain movement or they feel the pain all the time. Then when you do the balance method, you're sitting the T over there, the pain will reduce, right? Then you will know this is working or not. When the pain cannot trigger out by certain movement, for example, uh, the, some patient came here for palpitation. Some people come here for insomnia. There is no way to trigger out the palpitation after like maybe the, after like a running for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, we can not let the patient to do so in from uh, like before the treatment, right? For insomnia, there is no way to tell unless the patient trying to fall asleep, right? For those kind of issues, you can still use the balance method. However, you cannot tell is it working or not, right? However, for this patient, he have the pain eight out of 10 whenever he's doing like this. Then you know when you're doing the balance method, right, the pain will reduce right away when you ask him to do this movement again. That's why this is very suitable to using the balance method. The other patient we also use in the balance method, which is from, uh, from Nicole, right? From Nicole for your, your patients, yes. So can you share some information for, for, for which balance method we're using for this part? Mm -hmm. And the right shoulder pain was mainly, she said, around here, but it also goes to the uh, trapezius mm. and also up to the head and behind the eye. Mm. And then we were looking at the balancing method at the left, uh, um, left foot. She has constant pain, mm. like 8 out of 10, so it is quite strong. Mm. Um, and she was having pain even laying down. So mm. then we Tai Yin, Fu Tai Yin. And then we also checked the gallbladder and stomach channel. Mm. And then the most painful area was the gallbladder channel. Mm. So then we go ahead and um, join up basically needle post and ankle joint, mm. which is corresponding to the shoulder and neck. Um, and so then uh, she, after the first needle, which is gallbladder 40, she had a reduction of around uh, like from an 8 to 9 out of 10 to a 5 out of 10. Mm. 
want her to move uh, for five minutes, mm. the pain starts to be more and more. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, you see, her issue is also shoulder issues around here, right? Yeah. Inside of a certain angle will cause the pain. Her pain is a constant, always feel the pain around there. So we like to treat in such cases because there is an indicator to telling us we are doing the right job or not, right? So with a certain angle or constant pain. So we we using some of the usher points and the, that and the pain reduced like right away, right? Yeah. And then that means it's helping. Then you can try some local points. So in the future, at least, what you learn from today, at least you memorize this. Whenever you see uh, cases, you have the constant pain. They feel the pain right away, or they feel the pain like uh, with a certain movement can trigger out the pain on the spot. You better to use the balance method, at least to reduce the symptoms or not. But there is one thing I want to point out. Balance method is not a solution for anything, right? So for Nicole's case, that is a female patient about the 60, 65 age, right? And uh, for a minimum, uh, for her patient, that is like a, a, a male, kind of strong male, uh, 50 ish, 40, 50 ish, right? So which one do you think the balance method can uh, like uh, have a, a longer result? Which one have a longer result? The, 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 the younger male or the older female? Yeah, the, the young, younger male patient will have a better result. Maybe after one treatment, the pain will not come back for a long time. Why is that? Better yes, better T. So always put this in your mind. Balance method is just to borrow patient's T from one spot to the other spot to reduce the symptom, right? So when the patient still have a stronger T, so once the channel is be built up, is being fully opened, the T will keep going there. However, for older patients, it's just a relying on the, the, the needle to the, the lead certain T from here to the other place. After you remove the needle, maybe the channel will be, cl uh, you know, close, you know. Maybe the T is not strong enough to keep the, uh, like, uh, the, the energy, like, reaching that, like, region issues, all right? So for younger patients, for stronger patients, you can try more of the balance method to reduce the symptom. However, for older patients, if you want to treating the root, balance method can only reduce the symptom temporarily. You don't have to try every time and all the time, okay? For the first time, I still try balance method for the older patient because I want to earn trust from this patient. I want to show some positive instant result for the very first uh, treatment and then allowing the patient know, uh, oh, this guy can do something, right? And can relieve some of the issues. And then when I ask the patient to come back the next time, the patient will do so, right? This is uh, like a, a very good way to uh, like, uh, build up the trust. However, if you every time keep using the balance method, I don't think this one will fix the root for some weaker patient and, uh, and uh, older patient. You still have to try some local needles. You still have to targeting the root cause, which is totally find the qi, totally find the yin, totally find the yang, and find what is your, the, 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 the root diagnosis, okay? So that is the how to use the balance method and what time to use it, all right? And one more thing I want to point out, Ashi points actually play a huge part here. For balance method, we actually, uh, uh, for both, okay, for both of the patients, the male and the female, actually they all have a shoulder related issues. For a whole region, more than one channel, right? If you asking the question of the patient, where you have the pain, the patient will let, always let them know, this whole region, from here to here, this whole region. However, what the patient gestured is more than one channel, but which channel to look to, to, to get the treatment, you have to locate the usher point. Locating the usher point is quite important, require a lot of techniques, right? So me and I mentioned there are two points to locate the usher point, which is? Yes, how to locate the usher point. The technique I show you. Do you mind to share with the rest of the class? No, look at the usher point, usher point. Around the ankle. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, help it. How to help it, yes. How? Follow the line. Follow the line, yes. That's the first one. You follow the channels, right? So, uh, for, for the shoulder issue. For the shoulder issue, we suspect either it's a large intestine channel 
or the Sanjiao channel or the small intestine channel, right? So all three young channels in issue because uh, he just like the whole region here. So we go to the opposite side of the ankle to try to find the usher point. So you go to for all three balanced channels. So the stomach channel balances the large intestine, spleen channel balances the long, oh, we didn't use the spleen channel. Uh, the goblet channel balances the Sanjiao and the uh, like a bladder channel bal balances the small intestine, right? So when you locate the usher point, you do not skip each single region. Imagine this is the ankle around here, right? You follow all channels here, you palpate one by one. You do not miss any points. Once you miss only a little, maybe you are missing the usher point, okay? This is the first uh, part. What's the second part? You do not miss any points. Follow the whole channel. What's the second part? Hmm? Palpate, yes. How how palpate? How? Use your knuckle, right? Yes. So I recommend in the future when you're looking for the usher point, always use your knuckle. Yes. If especially for you uh, like a female therapist. For the female therapist, your force is not strong enough. For me, even my thumb is quite strong. But uh, when you want to look at the usher point, you need to add in kind of a strong simulation. So knuckle will be the best way. So I recommend in the future you locate the usher point by doing so, like this, okay? Using the knuckle from the index finger and holding the fist like this. And then you actually using the force from the whole arm to locate the usher point. This one is, is quite firm, right? Adding a lot of force. This way you can locate the usher point very easily, okay? All right, yes, by doing like this, okay? All right, yes. So uh, this is like a locate, yeah. And how do you know that point, when you pu push certain point, patients are like, oh yeah, yeah, I feel pain here. How do you know this is the real usher point? This is not you pressing too hard. Okay, yes. So you put here, oh yes, five. Uh, patients are like, five out of 10. You put here, oh, six out of 10. You put here, eight out of 10. How do you know the eight out of 10, that's the usher point? You compare the local ones, right? That that one hurts the most. And you have to compare one more spot to making sure this is the usher point. The other leg? The other leg, yes. So you always you always go for the, the opposite side of the body. When you check the ankle, you have to locate, for that one, it's bladder 60, right? Bladder 60 hurts very much. You go for the other bladder 60. So the, the, the worst side is like a, he feel the pain like a seven, eight out of 10, right? What's the pain level from the other bladder 60? Yeah, two or three, right? So like it varies a lot. However, when you palpate the other bladder 60, it's all also seven or eight. Do you think the bladder 60 is usher point? Maybe yes, maybe no, okay? So maybe this person have both side of a shoulder issue. So this shoulder reflects the other ankle, this shoulder reflects the other ankle, right? So maybe both bladder 60 works or maybe the bladder channel or the, the, the bladder organ have some issues. So that's why bladder 60 all have like a very severe like issues. Usually when you find usher point for both sides, this usher point is not so helpful, okay? One side, one always works the best, okay? Try to locate that one, okay? And actually find the right usher point, give you a lot of information how to treat it locally as well, right? Then, okay, we find the usher point from the bladder 60 to treat in the shoulder, right? Then you know, even he gesture, the whole thing uh, is hurting, right? But which channel, like for the locally here, you think is the issue? Well, small intestine, right? W why is that? Because the bladder channel balances the small intestine channel. Then you don't have to focus so much for the large intestine. Yeah, focus more for the small intestine channel, right? So that's why usher points are really working as a one more diagnosis technique for us to know where to treat locally, okay? So usher point works very good, okay? Works very good. So that's why after yes. we finish the balancing method, like the bladder 60, mm. we pull out and then we uh, palpate his arm again. And then he mostly like painful on the small intestine, oh. not large intestine. Good. Uh, Good. Mm. That's why we just put on the needle locally, small intestine. Good, yes. There are many things I need to share here, okay? So why the pain shift? Why the pain from the one big region to the smaller region? Why is that? This is getting better or this is getting worse? Better. This is getting better, okay? So in the future, after you do something and the patient said, oh, the pain changed, you bear this in your mind always. 
This is getting better. You did something, let the pain move. Usually, it's a kind of a reduce, okay? Usually, this is kind of a reduce. Even the patient didn't feel the pain reduce. However, when the location moves, this is a sign of improvement. Bear this in your mind, okay? So actually, before you do the treatment, you can let the patient know, okay? So maybe the pain will reduce, maybe the pain will, will move. They are all signs in TCM showing you we have some positive results, okay? After you, then you, you, you do the treatment, okay? So this is a very good sign, all right? And then, then you'll know the small intestine one, the, the blockage uh, is the worst, right? So the rest, the qi is better and they don't feel anything like uh, worse, but the only small intestine remaining, then you can just uh, try some local needle over there, okay? Yeah, so very good, yeah. There is one more thing I want to mention about the move qi technique. When we use the balance method, especially treating, treating joint related issues, so what we plan needed for the usher point, we lead the qi from usher point to that pain region, right? So what is the best way to move the qi from one spot to the other spot? I mentioned uh, like uh, during the treatment, what is the best way? Simulate how? Massage? You think massage is the best way? Bladder 6 is on the ankle. That person have a, have a shoulder issue. You will massage from the ankle all the way to the shoulder? How, how, how? Five times a minute. Five times a minute, oh, okay, yeah. You, you five times a minute where? Ankle, knees, waist, shoulder? <laughs> Okay, yeah, you, you're doing the simulation of the needle, right? For the bladder 60, okay, good. So that's all you do? Yeah, so move the shoulder, that's the most important part, okay? So this is called move qi technique. Move qi technique, that is when the patient feel the pain after certain movement, during the needle insertion, you always let the patient to do the same movement. This is the best way to lead the qi to exactly where the pain is. Okay, because after the movement, they feel the pain, right? During the movement. So you ask them to do the same movement, which will trigger out the pain, okay? Always doing so. When patients have a lower back pain, you do the usher point. Meanwhile, you let them to do certain movement to trigger out this lower back pain. When they have a knee pain, same thing. When they have shoulder pain, neck pain, same thing. When it's a joint pain related issues, the best move T technique from the usher point pain the, to the pain location it is let the patient to do the exact movement which will trigger out the pain. That's the best one, nothing else, okay? When you can do so, let them to do so, okay? However, you will find out for that patient, when the patient move by, by himself, the pain is very less, right? However, when you give them an extra push, the pain actually is getting worse, right? So when the movement is not strong enough to get the pain out, you can help them to do the actual move, okay? You can move the, 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 the joint for them, okay? Yes, so this is like a, the best move T technique. Of course, there is some other like a, a small details about the move T technique. We don't have time to cover today. I'll cover more in the future, okay? Yes, so one more thing I want to mention is the spine-related issues, okay? Spine-related issues, yeah. So that patient have uh, three issues. One shoulder issue, one is like a spine related issue, T7, T9 related, and also the right side of the hip issue. Left shoulder, right hip. Do you think which one causing which? Or do you think everything is connected or not connected? Maybe it's the spine. Huh? I think maybe it's the spine that's causing. Yeah, it is the spine causing like a shoulder, spine causing the hip, right? Because the spine in TCM, what spine is considered of in TCM? In TCM, what term can associate with the spine? Very simple, very simple, yeah. Doom? Yeah, doom radian. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, That's doom radian, what, what is the function for the doom radian? What is the property for doom radian? Doom radian is the C of yeah. all the young channels, right? It associates a lot of big regions of our body around here, okay? It is a central line of our body around here. So doom radian, which is the spine, is very important. And it will trigger out a lot of like a spine, uh, like a alignment related issues. Usually, when they have a both side of a shoulder issue, both side of a hip issue, high chance this is a spine related issue. High chance this is a spine related issue. At least it's around here, right? So for the patient you are treating around here, like uh, do you think it's a spine related issues? What's the chief complaint from, the from this patient? 
pain of the tingling where? Well, tingling, tingling their legs. Tingling yes. Their back, tingling their legs. Yes. Uh, pain of the back, tingling of the legs, right? So to be exact, so tingling for the right side and coldness sensation for the, from the left side of the legs, both lower limb. Do you think this is a spine-related issues? Yeah. This is 100% spine-related issues. What other chief complaint uh, that person have? Like shoulder and neck pain. Shoulder and neck pain. Do you think this is spine related issues? This is 100% spine related issues. Okay. So if you want to treat in the root, guys, so you can you can treat in the leg. Be my guest. Okay. The symptom will be always come back. If you want to solve the issue once for all, you start from the spine. You start from the spine. Okay. Spine will leading all type of issues. So let's see. Uh, do you remember for that patient before? He come here treating the shoulder for the shoulder, which side of the shoulder? This side of the shoulder, right? After treatment, he said the shoulder is all cured, right? One, one session. How come this side, after like a month ago, this side is all good, and now it's the other side of the shoulder? Do you think, what, what causing this issue? Spine, okay, yes. So you see the pain is alternate from the both side of the sh sh shoulder, right? This side and then the other side, yes. Um, she wants her picture of her tongue. Oh. So I need it. Yes. Mm. <laughs> um, That's her, right? Yeah. Okay, yes, you can take it. Thank you. Yes. Mm. So spine is very important. So which means do meridian, hua to jia ji point and the bladder channel. Those three channels when you're treating certain issues is very important, okay? It's very important. Okay? So then it's leading to how to do the hua to jia ji. Hua to jia ji is from Alisa, right? Who's the helper for Alisa? Marina, yes. How how deep I went for the hua to jia ji? Yeah, the muscle. Yeah. Yeah. For the back, for the upper back, how deep? Very deep. Very deep, like how? How much? Three twin or one twin or two twin? How deep? Three twin. Three twin. <laughs> no, no, not that deep, not that deep, yeah. For the upper back, what upper back, one twin, okay? Lower back, two twin. You can go perpendicular for the Huatu Jiaji. However, you have to be very close oh, to the Huatu Jiaji. Huatu Jiaji, yes. I think so, you touch the bottom of the Yeah, for, for the back shoe point, no, not the back shoe, Jiaji point. Jiaji point, don't go too yeah. deep, okay? Otherwise, causing issues, yes. Yeah. Upper back, one twin, perpendicular. And the lower back two twin perpendicular. You can you can actually reach to the end. Okay. Oh, depends on the like, uh, size of the patient as well. Okay. Yeah. Don't go too deep for the slimmer size. Okay. So that's how to treat in the spine. So in the future, I'll share more of this. Otherwise, we don't have uh, much like a uh, time. We have uh, ten more minutes. All right. So about the position of the treatment. Mm. Uh, today for Nicole's patient, right? So you leave the arm like this, right? So actually, the arm position, I don't think is the best position to treating certain issues. Because the patient have a neck pain, headaches, and some shoulder arm issues, right? So when you let the patient lying on the stomach and leave the arm reach out on the chair, the arm actually is lower than the body, right? So when the arm and the body is not on the same water level, so that it's not easy for the qi and the blood travel from the hands to the arm and the head, you know? That's why during the treatment, the best position is lying flat. When it's flat, the, both the qi and the blood will travel very smooth like this, right? When one side is higher, one side is lower, not only the blood, the qi will not travel very good that, that, that way. One time, about a year ago, I treating one patient with an extreme, extreme, like a frozen shoulder, okay? That patient, he came in, he's like a, his job is install windows, okay, install windows. He cannot move his shoulder at all, okay? And he went to other therapy, actually it's getting worse. For almost two months, he can move, he cannot move the shoulder even a little bit like this. So at that moment, I tried the balance method, same thing. I, I treated millions of patients with the shoulder issues, and they all got a very positive result. However, for that patient, I asked him to sit in, and that was winter time. It's kind of a cold environment of my room, 
and uh, no matter how strong needle I try for his ankle, and uh, the shoulder is, does not get him better, okay? And actually it's getting a little worse, okay? I think, oh, I make a huge mistake. Because the patient is sitting, the qi does not reach from the ankle to the shoulder that well. I need to make him sure the patient laying flat. Then the first thing I did is like I let, remove the needle, let the patient to going flat, and I using some heat bag for the ankle, for the shoulder, warm up everything, right? Yes, and actually without doing anything, the pain reduced already, okay? And uh, then I try some needles, same point, same technique, same approach, the pain reduced, okay? The pain reduced. You always remember this story for your future patients, all right? So when you leading the qi to somewhere, it's like leading the water. Water will have a lot to do with the gravity, okay? So making sure you lay the patient flat, okay? That's why patients faint a lot after you do strong needling because they are sitting and standing and the, 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 the qi and the blood does not reach in their brain region causing the fainting, okay? When you notice some people does not feel well, that means the qi does not reach in the head, okay? It does not reach in the head. To prevent fainting from needle, you better to lay the patient flat, okay? This is the laying position. This is a f pure physics, very easy to understand. However, very important, essential part to, to, to tell your treatment is working or not. And one more thing is the temperature. We are leading the qi and the blood to a certain region of the place to getting the, the, the fix, to getting repairment, right? Do you think the temperature have a lot to do with the qi and blood or not? Have a huge to do with the qi and blood. If the patient, if your treatment room is very cold, the patient lying here will feel a lot of like a coldness already. You can do whatever to, to the patient. I don't think you are getting very good treatment. Imagine you're lying down naked in a treatment room with nothing. Do you think your shoulder pain will getting worse or getting better? Well, definitely getting worse, okay? So that's why. And also the position, I want to add in something else. So before Alisa mentioned something, how long we should leave the, that's the next point, treatment time. How long we should leave the needle in, right? So when you're treating a shoulder issue, when you're treating any joint-related issue, do you think longer treatment is better or shorter treatment is better? Longer treatment is better or shorter treatment better? Imagine, weak patient, 70 year old, lower back, sacral lumbar pain or shoulder pain, frozen shoulder, do you think longer is better or shorter is better? Usually shorter is better. The reason why is the patient does not have enough qi for you to use, right? That's the first reason. Second reason is any type of joint pain is considered rusty screw, right? Imagine the screw is rusty inside. So do you think keep the joint, keep the screw move will, will fix the issue better or leave the screw stay still will solve the issue better? Keep move well better because there's garbage inside. You want to send in the lubrication inside of the rusty screw, right? You want to keep move. However, when you put in the local needle for the shoulder and everything here, and uh, when it's a chronic issue and the patient do not have enough tea, enough blood, so staying longer time, do you think that's help better circulation for the joint or even worse circulation for the joint? Well, consider the patient cannot live very comfortably of the shoulder joint. So usually the circulation will, even the needles there, the circulation will getting worse, right? So in the future, bear in mind, what you're trying to do is increase the circulation of the qi of the blood. When the qi is moving, blood is moving, the result will be better. Whenever the qi, the blood, will getting worse during the treatment time, actually you prefer shorter, shorter treatment time, okay? You do not leave the needle for, for a long time, especially the, the patient cannot like uh, rest their arm in a very comfortable position, okay? You don't leave the very tr long, longer treatment time. Shorter treatment time will be good, okay? And oh, this leave one more thing for the maintenance. How to do the maintenance for, for the patient? Give some uh, like assignment for the patient to do. You let them to keep resting or keep light stretch. Let's stretch all the time, okay? You want what we're trying to do is keep the qi and the blood flow to the joints to the maximum level. Whenever, why patient wake up with some issue? 
because during sleep, the qi and the blood does not move to the maximum level, right? That's why the, they wake up with a certain issue. Wake up with a certain issue, that means the qi, the blood circulation is not that good. You have to do something over there. And you better to do something to making sure the blood flow is better during the treatment time. But during the, the, during the sleep, how can we do that? Patient sleep, how can we increase the qi and increase the blood? There's a several things, okay? I'll give you the answer. I'll feed you guys the answer, okay? <laughs> you guys, yes. So first, first, very easy one, M medical patch. We have a different me medical patch. Before sleep, you have shoulder pain, right? Yes, good. Leave the patch before sleep. Wear the patch during the 10 hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep. This is the most easy way to apply, right? So in the future uh, clinics, prepare some medical patch, something cool, something worse, something increase the blood flow. This is the least you can do. You know how much it does it cost for one patch? Even less one than one dollar. How much you guys charge in the future? Hundred or something, okay? This is a very good investment to bring the patient come back for the next visit and have a better result, okay? Have some investment for, for them. That's one. Two is, Keep it warm, have a warm water bottle, have a kind of a heat bag, have a heat blanket. Warm while making the qi go faster or slower. Go faster for sure, right? Yeah, so keep the temperature warm, yes. Let them to purchase some uh, heat bag or some like a, a heat blanket, right? And then herbs. Before sleep, drinking of the herbs. The herbs, even during sleep, they were taking action, right? Yes, so keep the qi and keep the blood flow. So in the future, when you're treating something, when they, they wake up with something, you know, oh, the qi flow is not very good during the sleep. Then you can do something about it, okay? The more you think, the better the, the, the result, okay? Yes, now I share knowledge with everybody, okay? When you do it, you are better than your classmates. You're getting more patience for, for, for your neighbors, okay? Yes, making sure you do that, okay? Yes, otherwise there is no way you compete with your colleagues, okay? Any question about today? Yes. So let's say to trigger out the, the pain, you have to trigger out the pain. Mm. Well, it's like a position that you have to stand. Like mm. to Good, yes. So guys, this is important. Yeah, so Joe is asking, what if the pain can only trigger out by certain position, patient sitting or standing? For this case, I recommend you do two things. One is you learn anatomy very well. You know each function of each muscle. In this case, even the patient lying down, you know what movement during, during lying down position you can still trigger out the pain. That is the harder way. However, this is the most solid way, okay? A lot of people are doing so, okay? Learn more ab about the anatomy. The second thing is uh, once you know the patient is strong enough, you can apply some uh, scalp needle around here in case the patient faint, right? So you let them to sit with back support. When they faint, they can like, uh, fall somewhere like, on the chair, right, without falling on the floor. And uh, let them sit to do certain movements, right? So making sure they can, fend, uh, like, uh, they can, they can fall onto something, be, be very safe, right? And only try one needle at a time and try a very short time of treatment, making sure nothing happened, right? I do not recommend you trying this for the first time patient or weaker patient. When the first time a weaker patient, do not let the patient to stand or, uh, uh, or sit to the treatment. Otherwise, you're asking for trouble, okay? Yeah. Any other question? All good? All right, yes. So I'm gonna see you guys next week, right? Yes. So next week, I will alternate from the, the, the lead doctor and uh, the, the helpers. So lead doctor, helpers making sure the room is fully cleaned, the, the needle box is returned, and lead doctor making sure you're writing all the charts and uh, like assign your names around here, okay? Everybody have a full attendance today. And I will see you guys next week. Mm. Yep. Mm.